Welcome to another live well Tech training class. We are so happy you are here. Today we're going to be talking about MAP sensors, manifold absolute pressure sensors. Been around since about 1980. In fact, this is one of the first sensors that was introduced to me. And I'll tell you what, when they said MAP, I had no idea what they were talking about. Okay, of course, today we do. All right, before we get into it, first we're going to go, when we leave here, we're going to go over and Mike, and Dave Hawk are in the uh, validation lab, and or the audit lab, and uh, we're going to meet those guys in there. But before we do, I have your question for the T-shirt. Yes, and this one's not an easy one. I'll warn you. All right, here's the wiring diagram for this map sensor. I've looked at wiring diagrams for sensors like this many times, and uh, here you have your five volt reference comes down into the transistor, right? And uh, here's your ground, and here's your signal going up into the computer. By the way, this is both PCMs. All right, when it sends a signal up, the computer receives it. On all these, you always see this right here. You see a resistor going to ground. Why is that there? Why is that there? And to tell you the truth, I never fully understood why that was there, and I had to talk to one of our engineers about that. Very interesting stuff. If you got the correct answer, text it in, and uh, we'll get a t-shirt out to you tomorrow. One of these very cool Wells t-shirts, yes, if you'd like one. And if you, do, if you answer this correctly, you deserve one, let me tell you. All right, with that, without further delay, let's go over to Mike and Dave in the lab. All right, thanks, Mark. We're here today in the uh, audit lab here at Wells, and I'm joined by our one of our senior project engineers, Dave Hock. How's it going, Dave? Very good, Mike. Yourself? Good. Good to have you. Great. Thank you. So what do we do here in the audit lab? In the audit lab, we test parts that come in from the production line. All the parts in the line are 100% tested there. And okay. We take a sampling of them and bring them into the lab and do further testing on them. Okay, so just a random sample to do different temperatures, that kind of thing? Correct. We're running at minus 40, okay. at ambient, and at 125 degrees C, which is a normal operating range for the engine. Okay. So I brought in, today I have two parts here, MAP sensors. Yeah, right. That I'll want to test on. Now this is only an ambient test right now. Okay. <clears throat> and what will happen is our Step testing the here. units here are, will uh, vary the pressure to the parts. Okay. And then we'll get an indication on the screen of what's happening. All right. So you're checking for leaks, you're checking to make sure that the voltage readings are right, all that kind of Correct. thing? Correct. Okay. So the first thing it does is it builds up the pressure to test a leak, and then it will go down to roughly ambient pressure, okay. and then down to uh, lower vacuum readings which the engine will see. All right. And how long does this test take? It takes about 20 seconds. Oh, that's not so bad at all. All right. Now, is this similar to the test that they run out on the line? This would be the same test that's run on the line. Okay. All right. Perfect. And every sensor that comes off that line has this test done? Correct. That is awesome. Very good. So now we see here two green spots, which represents two good parts okay. through our test. Then we have voltage readings uh, at the different pressures and different heats uh, arrangements. Sure. And this data is then stored and can be re referenced later on. Perfect. So these two pass? These two pass. All right. So this is a one bar sensor. It reads, it's normally used on, on the normally aspirated engines. Okay. And you get a certain amount of horsepower out from that engine. Sure. To get more horsepower out of an engine, turbochargers are installed. And those read two and three bar. Okay. And when I refer to bar, I'm referring to the pressure reading, which is typically a bar is at ambient pressure uh, we're, but we're breathing in, in, in right now. Okay. Two bar would be twice that amount. Okay. The three bar would be three times that amount. So, so what exactly is bar besides just another unit of measurement? One bar is typically about 14.5 psi. Okay. Uh, or about 29.5 inches of mercury, depending upon what kind of readings you're, you're getting. Okay. Inches of mercury are, are used a lot of times also by the weatherman, if you were seeing the, the numbers 20 or 30, you know, 29, 30 uh, inches okay. are the same readings. So two bar would be about 30 psi. 
right. which is a, a boost level from the uh, sure. normal engine. Yeah, whenever you have a turbo or, or supercharger or whatever is on there. And spring bar would be about 45 PSI. Okay. It just keeps going up from there. Correct. It's a multiplication factor. All right. All right. Very cool. All right. Well, is there anything else here today? That's all I really have today. All right. Well, then uh, I'm going to head over to the car so we can work on that and send it back to Mark. Hey, thanks, Mike and Dave. That was really cool. Very interesting stuff. And by the way, I just want to make it clear that every part that we manufacture is 100% tested on the line before it goes in the box. All right, every part that we manufacture, and MAP sensors are one of them. What they do in the validation lab is they'll take samples off the line and just random samples, and they'll further test them more closely in the validation lab. And that's what uh, Mike and Dave were doing. Pretty cool stuff. I like that. And Dave Hawk is an excellent engineer. He's very, very good. All right. Now we're going to go to the vehicle. We've got a 2000 uh, Chevy Impala that has a problem with the map sensor. I believe it's a PO 107, I believe it is. I'm not sure on that. But Mike is over there now. So we're going to go meet him right now. Let's come on. Let's go. Come on. All right, I made it back. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> okay, back from the lab, and, yep. and here we go. Okay, we got a 2000 Chevy Impala here with a 3.8. Really cool engine that, you know, I'm sure you've all worked on them. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of my favorites to work on. Yeah. And when it came in, it had a PO 107, right? Yep, check engine light on, okay. and he was complaining about a lack of power. Didn't feel like it had the, the oomph that it used to. And, um, Just he was feeling kind of doggy, huh? Yep. Yep, and then also he was talking about, it, he felt that it was cranking over longer. It took longer to crank a over. Longer start time. Yep. You know, there are other symptoms, too, that can lead to a MAP sensor. Yeah. And uh, one, one of the things that we did when we were doing the research on this is we went out on to uh, Identifix. Mm -hmm. And Identifix, we found uh, an example. If you want to bring that up, Dave. And this is a really good example, and this happens frequently, is a MAP sensor will cause shifting problems on the transmission and uh, torque converter lockup yeah. won't be locking up. Okay, Dave. Right. And uh, you can see that there's a number of different things that can, uh, symptoms that can lead to a bad MAP sensor. Right, exactly. Okay, which is very interesting. And MAP sensor itself is one of the key sensors on a, on a vehicle. For sure, yep. And uh, you want to describe, it measures vacuum, right? Right, yep. Why, why is that important? Well, it's measuring the vacuum inside the engine. So it's uh, a measurement of, how far the throttle's open, uh, right. a measurement of load. It's a, a load type sensor. So if you take a manifold, mm -hmm. right, and you got it all closed up and you got va uh, suction on one end, right, right you're going to get a vacuum inside exactly. of it, yep. right? But then when you have a throttle that's a big hole to yep. the atmosphere, when yep. you open that up, whew, all the right. vacuum goes away. So at wide open throttle, there's actually very little or no vacuum inside of the manifold. It's, uh, right. Uh, atmospheric pressure. Mm -hmm. So the same as a, a test at wide open throttle would be the same as a test uh, on key on engine off. Right, right. And so, we'll get to, into that in just yep. a second. But why don't you go through and talk about how you sure. went through your diagnostics. All right, let's do it. Uh, since I already had the scan tool hooked up to pull the codes, I looked at freeze frame and just uh, engine data. Mm -hmm. And I got that pulled up here. Okay. So we look at the scanner here. You can see right now our map sensor voltage reading is 2.34 volts. But okay. at this moment, I'm not sure if that's a good number or not. Right. So I went out online looking for a spec and some sort of test procedure to see of what that should read. Okay. So if we go ahead and pull that up, thank you. There, very good. You can see at wide open throttle, you should be between four and 4.8 volts. Right. And remember the wide open throttle is the same as testing key on engine off. Right, exactly right. And th you know how much I like rule of thumbs. Right. You know, because I, you know, when you're in a shop, you don't want to be running back and forth to, <laughs> yeah. if you don't have to. Save the time, right? yep. Yeah, save some time. And uh, this is the rule of thumb that I would keep in my head, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a really, it's a good test. It's right, It's a good test yep. and it's simple. Yeah, and between one and two volts at idle, that's good to know too. Right. So, awesome. Okay. So we so, know our sensor's out of spec right now. Right. So what, what I checked next was I went ahead and got our wiring diagram and first of all, found out how the sensor works and, and how the system works for okay. it. You can bring up the wiring diagram there, Pull Dave. that up. Find that. There, there we, we go. go. So you have a five volt reference coming in on the gray wire to the sensor. Mm -hmm. Our sensor's grounded through the PCM on the orange and black wire. 
and our signals on the light green wire. Okay, very good. So and uh, that's pretty darn straightforward. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Pretty typical three wire sensor. Okay, Dave. Yep. So then what I went ahead and did is I want to make sure the computer is actually telling us the right information. Okay. So if we pull up that pinout diagram, that way we'll know what, uh, which wire to back probe here. You there can you see, go. Okay, so we want to be on the light green wire as our signal, so we'll back probe. So we got our, our signal, signal in the middle and our power and grounds are on the ends. Right. Okay. So what I'm doing now is back probing the sensor to make sure that the sensor output is the same as what the computer is reading. Right. Not that there's a short to power or something or short right. to ground in the circuit. Yep. So you can see now as we go to our meter, turn it back on here. We're at 2.38 volts and our sensor is reading 2.34. So that really does confirm, you know, what the sensor is sending out, the computer is seeing. Right. So we can be reasonably sure at this point we have a bad sensor as long as we have 5 volts. Exactly, yeah. If our okay. power supply in is less, then uh, obviously our signal output And the easiest less. way to do that is to uh, back probe the power and ground and we know those yep. are the ends. It doesn't matter which is which. And we should see five volts now. And we should see five volts. And Perfect. if we had that swapped, we'd see negative five. It right. would be the same thing. You just have to swap your leads. Exactly. Okay, very good. Perfect. So now we can be reasonably sure that we definitely have a problem with this map sensor. Yep. And we need to replace it. I agree. And just one other thing that I thought was interesting that the scan tool actually shows us here. If we go back to it, I just thought it was interesting at the 2.34 volts here. Mm -hmm. Our scan tool actually has a map reading in inches of vacuum. Oh yeah. So right yeah, now. So it thinks it thinks this engine is running at with idle, 16 inches. Yeah, a, a little low, but mm -hmm. yeah, at, at idle is what it's thinking. Just something to infer. So the what data. would happen then? You know, is your voltage goes, or as your uh, vacuum goes up, your mm -hmm. voltage goes down. Right. Right. Yep. So it's going to be running lean. Right. Is what's going to happen. Yeah, here. and that could, uh, could explain how it felt like it was kind of doggy. Right. And, and if we power. looked into it a little bit further, we might see something with the fuel trims going sure. on here too. So. Sure. All right. Very good. All right. So um, why don't we go ahead and bring up that, that test procedure there with the specs. Bring that up again. I want to do one more test here. Okay. I do have a new sensor here that I just grabbed on my way back. Yeah, right <laughs> off the line. Yeah, fresh. Still hot. <laughs> just like donuts. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to plug in our new sensor here just so we can do these tests. Okay. Um, just to show what a, a known good is going to do. Just to verify. Yep. So it says to measure voltage with ignition on, engine off. So I'll go ahead back probe our signal wire again. Okay. And let's check that on our on our meter, 4.61. On our scanner, 4.5. I'm happy with that. We're supposed to be between 4.0 and 4.8. Perfect. So we're good. Yep. The second okay. part there says start the engine and apply 10 inches of vacuum to the unit voltage should be 1.5 to 2.1. And this is a good opportunity less. to point out, you know, it's got it's people like you and I that are actually writing this stuff. Sure. Okay. And mistakes happen. Yeah. All right, you don't really have to start the engine. So, you know, when you read these test procedures, make sure you know what they're telling you to do right. and understand what they're telling you to do. So, we don't really have to start this engine. Nope. You know, we can do this just fine. Right here. Yep. That's why because, I got a vacuum uh, pump here. We're already, you know, start the engine and apply 10 inches of vacuum. Well, the only way you can do that is pull the map sensor out. Sure. So I'm going to go ahead, pump up 10 yep, inches 10 of inches. vacuum on there. Okay. And look, we're at uh, 2.95. And it says it's so. supposed to drop 1 to 2 volts. And mm. we're right there. I'm happy with that. Yep. I'm happy. So a okay, map so sensor I, would fix this. Right. So we got her fixed. Perfect. All right. and that's a good way to verify too, just to make sure everything's working properly. Yep. And very good. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Uh, and that's how that's how map sensors work. That's how they, okay. you know, that's how they're put together. Okay. And oh, uh, one more thing, I just want to talk about um, newer cars. You know, they have map sensors, but some of them are turbocharged. Oh yeah. Those boost sensors on there, they're going to operate the same as your map sensor. That's a good point. They just might be calibrated differently or built a little different to right. um, be able to evaluate the higher pressure. But the construction, as we can see on our line, is virtually right. the same. Yep. It's virtually the same thing. It's the same type of sensor. It's the same thing. So you just have, you're just measuring pressure right. instead of vacuum. Yep. It's and remember, th this is a 5 volt sensor. The 12 volt sensor is going to test similar, but the voltage readings will be different. Yes. So just keep an eye out for that. Yep. Make sure you, you got a 5 volt sensor. Right. Okay. 
Yep. All right, very good. Anything else? No, I think that's and, it. And uh, yeah, we didn't touch on speed density or any of that stuff. The old cars, you know, like that I used to work on, you know, that we thought they were going to go away from map sensors, but actually today's cars have map sensors and yep. uh, mass airflow, which is interesting because uh, a map sensor is nothing more than measuring vehicle load. Mm -hmm. Okay, as the load increases, like you're going up a hill or uh, wind resistance, whatever it is, a trailer on the back, uh, extra heavy person in a seat, you know, whatever it is, yep. whatever it is, it's going to change load, okay, and you have to adjust things accordingly, and that's why your map sensor is so important, that's what your right. computer is looking at. So, uh, good stuff, and watch out for shifting problems, that's mm -hmm. a tricky one, so keep that in the, in the back of your mind, that right. you need to take a look at that map sensor if you got a shifting uh, issue. Yeah. Before you pull a transmission out, well, please yeah. look at that map sensor. <laughs> and that's been done. So, uh, yeah, be careful with that. Right. Okay. Um, so, what I'd like to talk about now is a new addition yeah. uh, to our broadcast. And what we added, it's called TechNet. And Tech the idea. Connect, yep. TechNet. Connect. Connect. Tech yeah. Connect. I'm Tech sorry. Connect. Yeah, I don't know. It's so it. new, I don't even know the name. <laughs> but uh, Tech Connect. Yep. And the idea there is. A lot of times we get questions and we don't have enough time or they come in after we have uh, done our broadcast right. and we see it afterwards and geez, I, I wish we would have answered that but we didn't see it at the time. So this gives us an opportunity to announce the next class that's coming up yep. plus uh, we can answer the questions from last time. Right. And sometimes, honestly, we don't know the right answer. And yeah. we'll do our research and we'll make sure we get you the correct answer. Last thing we want to do is give you wrong information. Yeah, that wouldn't be and good. No, that's not what we're here for. Okay. Right. And uh, so that gives us an opportunity to do that. Mike will be doing that. Yep. And uh, go out and watch episode one. Great stuff. That's what you can expect in a week. Yeah. You're going to see another one in yep, a week. Next week, Friday. Right. Okay, very good. Let's bring up our, uh, yes, Perfect. yes, 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 the, the wiring diagram. Okay, now, uh, we do have a question up here too if you want to check that right, out, Mike. Let's take a look. And, bus jockey, you are my hero. You are <laughs> my hero. I'm telling you, I did not have any, I, I had assumptions of what that did. I thought maybe it was for our RFI. I thought it was for EMPs or something like that, something weird, some high voltage, but it, nothing added up. Finally, I talked to one of our engineers, Dean uh, Scoshier, and he knew exactly what it was, and Bus Jockey, you answered it absolutely correct. It is a voltage divide circuit for the signal. What you don't see on the other side of that arrow up on top is <clears throat> there's another mega resistor going to ground, and what it's doing, what the computer is doing is measuring the voltage between those two. And it's a voltage divide measurement. So, Bus Jockey, I'd be happy to send you another T-shirt. That's awesome. And uh, I'll send you a kiss, too. That was amazing that you got that right. Okay. Um, <laughs> not a kiss, anyway. <laughs> Maybe but a there's kiss. my email. Send me an email, and uh, we'll get that shirt out to you. Uh, and then we have and actually, a question. Yeah, here. those are two great questions from okay. Drew and from Carlos. And I think, I think I'm going to save those answers for the, for the Tech Connect. All right. Those are going to be some... Okay. Those are some good questions. I want to do Let's a little more research on exactly the way the map and the them. map correlate, like Carlos is asking. Okay. Great so, questions. Yeah. And we do appreciate that. Check us out uh, next Friday. There will be a video coming out with the answers. Yep. And uh, also an announcement of our next class. Perfect. All right. Thanks Sounds for good. being there. Without you being there, we would not be here. And you know what? We'll see you again next time in the Wells Tech Garage. All right. We'll see you then. It's lunchtime. Now. All right. All right. Let's